I have here with me Filippo Brunelleschi, the great Renaissance architect. And sculptor, and painter, and engineer, and goldsmith. My goodness, is there anything you don't do? Not a not, great deal. Not a great deal. Well, I'm here to talk to you about your greatest triumph. You built the magnificent dome on the cathedral in Florence. Thank you so much for talking to us today. And how did you get the commission to construct the dome? Well, it's a long story. They started the cathedral more than 100 years ago. They wanted a huge octagonal dome. And they had no idea how to make it. They just assumed somebody would come along and have a clever idea. And fortunately, they were right. A hundred years later. A hundred years you. later, yes. So what did they do for a hundred years? Just have a hole? It, yes, just open, rain coming down on oh, the dear. floor. You couldn't hold mass. It was an embarrassment. So finally, what did the city fathers and the church leaders do? So they said, okay, we'll have a competition to, to do the cupola. And anybody could submit ideas. And uh, I had ideas, but they wouldn't listen to me. Eventually, of course, they did listen to Cosimo de' Medici. You know about ah, him. Yes, yes I've heard of him. Wealthiest family in Florence. They started out with a wool shop, then bankers. Now he's banker to the Pope. Ah. So anyway, when Cosimo said, ah, you shouldn't listen to Filippo, they listened. Ah. So, so I got a hearing. You got a hearing. And they said, okay, well, they did. I tried to explain my ideas. Uh, I didn't have any drawings, of course, because I never make plans. I'm very worried that people will steal my ideas, which they ah. have tried to do. Ah. Okay, so they said, well, and I said, okay, I gave them each an egg, and I said, can you balance the egg upright? Well, of course, nobody can balance it. No, how can no. you do that? No, so you just crack it a little bit, and now you oh. can balance it. And, uh, okay, anyway, they, they said, okay, well, show us a model of your design. So I, I made a scale model, and they could walk inside, and I explained everything. And, of course, they have seen your work. They have. I've designed other buildings, you know, about the Ospedale delle Intercenti, oh, the, the orphans, it, if I do say, a very nice classical design, yes. So then you won the contest? You got the I commission? did. I mean, people came through. Uh, Lorenzo Ghiberti had his idea for doing the cupola, but then they started asking questions about it, and it was clear he had no idea. You two don't get along, do you? Ever since the, uh, the uh, casting of the doors, no. Right, he got that commission. Yeah. But you got the commission for the dome. For the dome, much more important. And what did you do first? Well, the first thing I did is I went down to Rome, with Cosimo, in fact. And we studied some of the ancient Roman buildings. The Pantheon, which is the largest dome uh, from the Romans, the largest dome in the world. Uh, we studied, it's made of cement. And I asked if I could cut a hole through to see how the inside was made. Cut a hole in the Pantheon? It's one of the most famous buildings in Europe. Who would let you do that? I bet, but it's a church now. Oh. So the Pope. You asked the Pope? He said, well, okay, Cosimo asked the Pope. Ah. And he says yes. Well, because Cosimo's his banker. Yes. I see. What did you discover when you cut a hole in it? It's actually two domes, an inner dome and an outer dome. And that makes it more stable. And it's made out of cement, a kind of cement that we don't even know how to make today. Anyway, so my dome is going to be made out of brick, special brick. Uh, I have an inner dome, almost a hemisphere, an outer dome, a lot taller for stability, and then bracework going in between them. Yeah. Bracework. Can you yeah. tell me more about that? Yeah, well, okay, so you have to prevent the domes from spreading outward. So we're going to have a metal chain, and then we're going to have a sandstone chain. It should last forever. Well, it sounds like your trip to Rome was truly inspiring. So you get started on the dome. You've got your idea about the chains. Yes. How long did it take you to build? Uh, about 18 years. In fact, wow. uh, the Pope came up and blessed it as we, were, as we were nearing completion. Well, it was a triumph when it was finally finished, yeah. for sure. Can you, do you know that 500 years later, it is still the biggest dome in the, in the world? Oh, I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, uh, I mean, even after I was dead, my machinery and everything remained in place for a while. We, we only know because a young guy, Leonardo da Vinci, made some sketches of it. Yes, he was young. He made a sketch of your machine. Uh, you have several that you invented because you said you were an engineer as well, that you had yes. to in invent some new engineering to realize your architectural yeah, visions. And all during this time. I mean, I was doing other buildings. I was doing sculpture. Uh, perspective and painting. I made a painting that was so perfect that you make if you make a hole and you look through a board at the door of the cathedral and you see what you can see through there and then they would look at my painting of the same view and they couldn't tell the difference. 
figured out all the geometry of perspective. You invented perspective? Oh, yes, yes. Even while you were building the dough? Well, I was busy. Yeah. Well, all the Renaissance artists started using perspective after mm -hmm. that. It became the thing. Well, I understand you brought a model of your machine. I did, and I can show you. And I actually, they had another, you know, even though I won the competition for the dome, that wasn't good enough. Then they held another competition for the machinery to construct it. And by the way, Lorenzo also had some ideas about that, did. part of which he stole from me. Uh, but I had a, a uh, I'll show you my machine that, that, that actually won the competition. Great.